Hello everyone and welcome to the 19th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can work with Cocoa Bindings in our applications. So Cocoa Bindings is just a really cool way that you can keep your model, basically your data, and your view objects in sync. So what I mean by this is that we can have objects in our window here. When we change the value of those objects, like a checkbox to maybe on or off, then we can update the value in our app controller. But the really cool thing about Cocoa Bindings is that you can bind multiple view objects to that one value in your app controller. So whenever something changes that value, all the other view objects get updated or notified of this change, and then they can update themselves. So it's a really cool way that you can just connect individual objects to a piece of data, and then you don't have to worry about uh, the view objects updating each other. So anyway, we'll talk more about how this really works in a bit, but the two main things are key value coding and key value observing, which we've already covered in the Objective C tutorials. So if you haven't uh, watched those tutorials already, make sure you watch those before you do this, even though you should have watched them a long time ago, because we did, you know, NS table view and other things. But uh, the key value coding and key value observing are the two main technologies that go into Cocoa Bindings, and that's basically how they work. So anyway, with that, let's just go ahead and jump into our application here. So this is a brand new Cocoa application. I just added an app controller class, which is just our normal standard um, subclass of NS object, and then I've added that object to the workbench as well. So nothing really done so far. So what we want to do here, though, is we want to add three different things. We want to add a checkbox, a text field, and a slider. And if you look up any Cocoa Bindings tutorial, you will always find the slider and the text field example, just because it's probably the best example that you can give for Cocoa Bindings, but also because, um, well, I mean, everyone uses it. It's just even Apple source code has it. So basically, it is the Cocoa Bindings example. But um, I'm going to just take it one step further and show you some other aspects of Cocoa Bindings with, uh, I'm going to add the checkbox in this tutorial, and this will, the checkbox will either enable or disable the slider value, or slider being enabled or not. So if the checkbox is on, then the slider will be on, and if it's off, then the slider, you won't be able to move it. So that's basically the, the idea of this. So let's go ahead and add the checkbox. So we'll drag this over here. And we'll just call it enabled. And then we'll add a text field, which will simply display the value that we have in our slider. So the text field will display the integer value of the slider of how far it is to the left or right. And we'll add the slider here, just add a horizontal one because it fits a little better. And there we go. So now we have all of our components that we have. So just to run through this one more time, the enabled checkbox will either enable or disable the slider. The slider value will change as you go left to right, and you can see this in the attributes inspector right here under value. You have a minimum of zero and a maximum of 100. So uh, you can change those values if you want, but the far left is zero and the far right is 100, and the text box will just reflect that integer value of the slider. So now that we have that, uh, we just have to figure out how we're going to save this data in our app controller, and then we can fi figure out the bindings later. So first, if we have this enabled checkbox, it's either on or off. So we're going to have some bool value, which is yes or no. And all the enabled checkbox is going to do is uh, use key value coding to change the bool value that we have in our app controller. So we'll have some bool called checkbox is enabled. And whenever we click or, uh, un or disable this checkbox, so uncheck it, then that will change the value in the bool to a no. So that's the idea. If the checkbox is on, it's yes, and you get the idea. So with that, uh, whenever we want to change this, we're going to use key value coding. So whenever the checkbox is off, then we'll use key value coding. And if you remember those tutorials, the two components of key value coding are having the key path, which meant again means you have to have properties to your instance variables. So you'll have the key path, which is basically like app controller dot checkboxes enabled. That's just the path of where that instance variable is basically with the property. And then you also have to have the value. So it's you're changing the value for some key path. So you have the value of yes or no, 
and then the key path is just the property of whatever the instance variable is in our app controller. So again, that's all in the key value coding tutorials, and I've already explained it there. So the next part, though, is how do we get updates uh, for whenever you know the slider wants to know if it's enabled or not? Because the enabled checkbox is not going to tell the slider anything. It's only going to change that piece of data. So how we do this is we use key value observing. And the key value observing portion will observe the value in our app controller, that bool value. And whenever that property is used, whenever it's changed, the key value observing will be notifying our slider on whether it can be enabled or disabled. So that's how that works. It's pretty simple, but it's all bound up into one thing, Cocoa Bindings. So with that, let's go ahead and add those instance variables here. So we'll have bool checkbox is enabled. And then we'll have also some int value. We'll just call it amount. And that will just be the amount that the slider is from left to right. So with that, of course, we're using uh, KVC and KVO, so we got to use properties. So we're going to have the bool checkbox is enabled. And then we'll also have the other property, int amount. So now we can flip over to our implementation, and of course we have to have the synthesizers for these because they're going to use these methods. So checkbox is enabled, and synthesize our amount. And there we go, we've set up all the things that we need to in our app controller to use KVC and KVO. So now that we have this, we're going to use a new little inspector over here known as the bindings inspector to bind the values of the views to their model objects. So we're just going to hit this checkbox to start here, and we're going to go over to the binding section which is located right here, known as the bindings inspector, and you'll notice there's quite a few things that we can uh, check for the checkbox. So the first thing though, and usually the most popular, is to bind the value. And the value is just the on or off state of the checkbox. And the value varies between the objects that you use. If it's a slider, it's an int or a float, whatever um, number value you want to use for the slider. But for the value of our enabled checkbox, it's going to be that bool. So we want to bind its value to that bool value that we have in our app controller, so we can just change the binding to our app controller. We'll say bind to app controller, and then we're going to change our model to our uh, model key path rather is going to be the checkbox. And there we go. So you can also see right here that we have app controller dot checkbox is enabled, and that just is the key path essentially for this value. So it's in our app controller dot checkbox is enabled. That uses that property that we have set up and it will uh, use KVC to set the value. So there we go, now we have our model key path, checkbox is enabled, and that will, uh, whenever our checkbox changes, it will change the value in our app controller. So now let's do the same thing for our text field. We wanna bind its value, whatever it's displaying. We wanna bind this to the amount. So we wanna bind whatever it's going to display in the text field, it's just gonna be the int value of the amount. So that's what we're binding to. Uh, for our text field. And now we're going to jump over to this cool thing. And basically the slider is going to have two different things. It has to be whether it's enabled or not, and it has to change the value as it slides left to right. So first we'll start with the value since we're kind of familiar with that at this point. So we're going to bind that again to the app controller, bind to the amount. And now that we have bound that, you can see again, app controller dot amount, that's what we're, the key path is. And now the last thing that we wanna do, now that we have the value set, is we wanna change another property which is called enabled. And the enabled property means whether the uh, control is going to be enabled or not. So we can have, again, binding it to app controller, hit bind to, and now we just change that key path to the bool because again the bool is going to be storing whether the, the thing is going to be yes or no or it's going to be enabled or not. So the checkbox is enabled is the key path and as you can see we have that right here. AppController.checkbox is enabled. So we've bound all the appropriate things that we need for this application. So we can go ahead and run this now. And it will run. 
And now you can see we get this nice little window here. We can't move the checkbox anywhere, or the slider I should say, because it's not uh, enabled yet. We'll just click enabled and now you can see, hey, we can now move the slider. And when we let go, you'll see that the text box now updates with its value. But we can change a few more things with Cocoa Bindings to make it a little more fluid if we want. We could set some default values to start out. So if we want to say the checkbox is in not enabled by default, so we'll just say no. We'll set the amount to a default of 20. And again, you could do this stuff in Interface Builder if you wanted, but I'm just showing that you can also set them in your init method as well. You can also change your text box if you want to center the text perhaps, just to make it look a little better. You could also set the slider to be continuous, which means it will continuously update as you move the slider. With, uh, without that, it only updates when you let go, so continuous just changes the slider to always updating as you move it. So let's go ahead and build and run this again. And as you can see, our default value to start is going to be 20. We could enable the slider, and as you can see, as we move it, the values change from 0 to 100. And we can also just change the values in here if we want, and you can see that the slider also changes as well because it's observing and it's also changing the values, again, all part of key value coding and, sorry, key <laughs> bindings, not key value coding, but key value coding and key value observing are the two technologies that are basically put into Cocoa Bindings. And as you can see right here, our slider changes the values using KVC, and then it also observes the values whenever we change it here. So that's the really cool thing about Cocoa Bindings. It gets rid of a lot of code that you'd have to write to you know, connect all these things together. Uh, all the code that we'd make if we were to do target action, we can really get rid of by using Cocoa Bindings to bind the view elements just to their designated um, model objects. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and many more uh, tutorials are on the way for the Cocoa series. We're going to have a few more update videos in the coming days uh, for why I haven't been making videos for a while. But anyway, um, if you still are um, you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you can go ahead and do that. If you have any questions, leave your questions in the comments below and subscribe to Twitter and Google Plus for other updates. Anyway, I'll see you next tutorial.